Jamie Dempsey, and I'm on a quest for a mysterious cloak mentioned only in the vaguest of rumors. Everything I've heard points towards the southern Philippines, where the old ways still live in the Manobo warrior tribe. It is said that their priestesses can weave a cloak from the threads of my life, recording my past and blessing my future. I'm on a quest to find the priestesses and prove myself a warrior worthy of such a gift. In this leg of my journey, I visit the island of Bohol, where I forge a blade, dive deep under the mountains, and learn a nearly lost language. In me all. In me all. After a 75-minute ferry ride along the Cebu Strait, I arrive in Bohol. The place locals call God's Little Paradise. Bohol is famous across the world for its beautiful landscape, natural attractions, and classy resorts. But here in the Philippines, it's also known for the first treaty ever signed between Filipinos and Spaniards. So, I'm going to a monument in Tagbalaran City to find out more. Spain failed to even start colonizing the Philippines for 40 years. Then in 1565, a local chieftain in Bohol concluded a treaty with a Spanish explorer, helping to lay the foundations for the Philippines' first Spanish settlement. The Sandigo Marker is here to commemorate the blood compact between Miguel Lopez de Legazpi and Datu Sikatuna to seal their friendship. The monument shows them drinking wine mixed with their blood. But what really draws my eye is the distinctive sword worn by the local chieftain. I hear I can find out more in a town called Moai, so that's where I'm headed. On the way, I pass Baklayan Church. In 2013, an earthquake released as much energy as 32 Hiroshima bombs, damaging many of Bohol's famous churches, including this one. is a smithing town, and while many of its traditional blacksmiths have quit the trade, there are still some who forged the famous Filipino blade called the bolo. Filipino warriors have used bolos against all their colonizers, from Spanish to Americans to Japanese. In fact, in World War II, the first Filipino regiment was called the Bolo Battalion, after their favorite close combat weapons. Masing makes all sorts of bolos, but the bolo I'm interested in is the barong, the warrior's blade. So what kind of metal are you using to make the bolos? This is from old traps, bearing, and pencil. So it's scrap metal that you repurpose for bolos. Oh, that's awesome. All right, I'll watch you first. The steel is heated in a furnace with temperatures of over a thousand degrees Celsius. When it's malleable enough, the smiths pound it on an anvil until they get the desired thickness and shape. Okay, it's ready for grinding. Okay, off to the next step. Ah, that's the handle. Aha! So this is how we sharpen the bowl. Woo! Like fireworks! Very pretty, but I don't want to get too close. Finished. Already finished! Awesome! Alright, my turn.
Sugar Bowl. It usually takes a beginner one day to get the rhythm. This team has been together for over a decade, so their coordination is perfect. <laughs> then you. Wait, when do I go? But Ms. Singh says he'll help me, so I want to give it another go. takes roughly 15 minutes to hammer a bolo into shape. Even after I get the hang of it, it takes me 30 minutes of non-stop pounding before Masing is satisfied. Okay, ready for training. Okay. Blade. Its weight is concentrated in front for more powerful chopping, and the handle is shaped to prevent it slipping out of my hand. All right, I think we're finished. Let's see how sharp this baby is. This is how you slice a watermelon. About half of Bohol is covered in limestone, resulting in many famous features. And I can't leave without seeing the most famous one of all. chocolate hills. There are hundreds of these throughout Bohol. In the dry season, they're brownish green, and in the wet season, they turn a purplish green, something I'd love to come back and see. Bohol's limestone has given it spectacular caves. I want to visit the most famous one. But first, a little maintenance. After my long haul, I decided to stop for an oil change. Baby's taking good care of me, so it's time for me to take good care of it. Are we all set? Yes. Thank you, sir. Locals speak of an 18th century freedom fighter, Francisco Dagohoy, who led a rebellion against Spanish rule using a magic amulet. I'm meeting Felix, his 12th generation descendant, to see if we can find Dagohoy's magic. Well, I heard that Dagohoy's cave is just near here. Are we able to retrace his steps? Oh, okay, well. All right, show the way. If Dagohoy's amulet is anywhere, it's probably under these mountains and a limestone cave complex that used to be his base. There, Dagohoy's magic was strongest. He was cornered many times, but always disappeared, reappearing miles away. This is the one of his uh, headquarters. So cool. This is a whole different kind of spelunking. Imagine retracing steps that were made roughly 300 years ago. Mm. Lead the way. Legend claims the Dagohoy's amulet allowed him to turn into a breeze, blowing from mountain to mountain and slipping past the Spanish. 
time to enter the caves and see if there's any truth to these tales. I have no idea how the rebels got in here with just 18th century equipment. It's a 17 meter drop to the underground passages that once housed Agahoy and his 20,000 rebels. the only creatures here. Bahol's caves have their own underground ecosystem, consisting of rare and strange creatures like albino crabs. It's like doing a limbo. The cave has changed since Dugahoy's time. Most recently, the 2013 earthquake sealed old passages and opened new ones. I have no idea how anyone could navigate this maze without electric lighting. No wonder they say Dagahoy's amulet also granted perfect vision in the dark. Still no sign of Dagahoy's amulet, but we may have found a small piece of his magic. What looks like a dead end is actually an underwater tunnel. is riddled with underwater passages. Swimming through them leads us to other caverns. Some even lead to other exits. Perhaps this was the source of stories about Dugahoy's amulet and his ability to disappear. I can imagine how impossible it must have been for the Spaniards to find out just where Francisco Dugahoy held his secret meetings in such an intricate cave. And I've only seen one third of them. I'm surprised none of them got lost. Sir Felix? Sir Felix? to catch my ferry to Samar Island. Along the way, I'm going to stop at some of Bahol's famous churches. The first landmark should be the town of Claren, but after an hour, I still don't see it. Hello. So sorry to bother you, but it seems I'm a 
little bit lost. Do you know where the port is? I, I'm sorry, I'm not from here, but I passed by a community down the road. Maybe you can ask them. Uh, all right, looks like I need to turn around then. Thank you. Yeah. If I can find this community he's talking about, I can probably get some directions. She is my great great grandfather, Dato Mariano Sumatra Datahan. So he gave us this place to live for the community and preserve our uh, study continuously our language. We have our classes now of our children and our adults. You come and go with us. Yeah, uh, I'd love to learn as well. Uh, right over here? Yeah. Okay. The Escaya's origins are a mystery. Some say they're descended from the builders of King Solomon's temple. Fewer than 800 remain to keep their unique language alive. Volunteers like Mora teach the language to kids and adults alike. Hello, kids. Hi. Of course, I'm sitting at the kids' table. This is probably where I should be. <laughs> Our lesson for today is about the Skaya language, and we will start first the Skaya alphabet. Ah, the alphabet. How yeah. many letters are in the alphabet? We have 46 letters. 46? Yeah. It's a lot to learn. Okay, so these are the Skaya alphabet. Okay, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, E, H, E. Achi, I. I didn't understand any of that. So our alphabet is taken from the parts of the human body. Very interesting. So your the, body is like yeah. forming the letters. Yeah, forming the letter. Like this. Like this. It's almost like sign language. How do I do my name, Jamie? Hard. Of course, it's hard. <laughs> but me is goes this way. Oh my gosh, that is hard. How would you do that? Like this. Yeah. And like this. Like that. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. A little more difficult than I thought it would be. So let us see first. E mi o hi bi o ma so ka ber ma o o bi o bi un ta tu o sip ti bi o tu bi no bi di bi e brolo e brolo very good okay so i have here a flash card so Jamie, this will be your test paper. So listen. This is January in Iskaya language. Imi o. Imi o. Next we have February. Ibi o. I don't think I'm gonna be able to remember all of this. <laughs> so we have an oral test. First, 
Let's have Jamie. So starting from, what is the Skaya name of January? N-A-O. August. Tatuo. Tatuo. I got some of them. November. November. No. 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 Nobe. <laughs> February. I don't know February. <laughs> Heavy on. Heavy on. November. No. No. <laughs> no. <-be. laughs> I keep forgetting. Yes. April. Cover. Cover. May. Mile. Uh, November. No. Be. Very good. I did it? I yes. passed? Thank you! <laughs> it takes a lot longer than a day to get any good at a sky. But I hope the tiny bit I know now will help just a little in keeping the language alive. late, they've invited me to stay the night, and I don't like riding in the dark, so I think I'll join the festivities. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I've experienced the whole's history and its weapons, its caves, and its people. But I'm still about 400 kilometers from my final destination. So it's time to head for the islands of Samar and Leyte, where I try to conquer the waves.